I ask for seconds as a bonus. Uh, so, you know, how do you get kids to eat kidney beans? I'm not even sure. But with this class, uh, we try to answer that. Uh, the secret for me to getting my kids to eat healthier food is really the sauce. So, you know, you have a, uh, I would have a lot of bowl meals for dinner uh, where, you know, I have some kind of a whole grain, some beans, tofu, uh, kale, you know, some veggies, uh, all of it really healthy, but, you know, not the most exciting thing to eat. But if you have a really good sauce, then uh, that's how I get my kids to eat kale, ask for seconds and thirds. Uh, the sauce makes all the difference. So uh, really over the years, I've collected and written a lot of different sauce recipes. Uh, I wrote the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, uh, which is here. Uh, there's 200 different recipes in the cookbook. And one of the focuses of the book is uh, different sauces. So there are over 30 different sauce recipes. And some of those we'll be uh, making tonight. And we can uh, share those and talk about those. So. Uh, the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, just to make my publisher happy, uh, it is available on Amazon uh, in print version and also in ebook version as well. Oh, thank you, Eric. All right, there's the link in the chat. Uh, so before we get started, just a couple things. Um, uh, let's see, uh, if you have any questions or comments at any point, uh, please feel free to put it in the chat. And, uh, you know, especially as I'm blending things, uh, perfect time to ask questions, things like that. And, uh, you know, we'll see those. And then the other thing is uh, kind of the star of the show tonight is the blender as always. So I use a Vitamix, uh, which you can see here. So you don't need a Vitamix in order to make these recipes, but uh, it really helps. So a Vitamix, if you don't know, it's a very powerful blender. Um, they are, unfortunately, they're kind of on the expensive side. Uh, they're about $350 new. Uh, at Target, but um, you can find them used on Craigslist or eBay for a lot cheaper than that. You can buy them refurbished on the Vitamix website. Uh, if you uh, don't have the Vitamix, uh, you, maybe you have a Ninja or a Nutra Bullet or something like that, that'll work. That's okay. Uh, the Vitamix, um, the thing that's great about that is it really cuts down the prep time quite a bit uh, because it just blends things so much and uh, it, it has a really great creamy consistency. All right, so the first recipe that we're going to do, uh, this is a kind of an early favorite of mine. This is the lemon tahini sauce. So this is really similar to what you're going to find in a Mediterranean restaurant, um, you know, with falafel or, um, you know, it's, it's commonly a dipping sauce, uh, maybe, you know, for pita, things like that, pita bread. So uh, this is really kind of a utility sauce. It's like one of the early sauces that I, uh, um, you know, modified and had the recipe for uh, basically, you know, you can put this on all kinds of different uh, grains and beans and veggies, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, the, the sauce is going to be really strong and it's going to make everything taste really good. So love these utility sauces. There's a whole lot of them in the book. I do have uh, recommendations for what you could pair it with if you wanted to, but really so many of these sauces are just meant to just go over any combination of, of different things. And uh, it's really gonna be kind of the star of the, of the meal. So uh, first ingredient I'm gonna add is one cup of tahini. So um, uh, this, you probably can find tahini in your supermarket. You might just have to kind of hunt for it a little bit. Um, tahini, if you don't know, is just ground sesame seed paste. So it's really similar to like how they make peanut butter, but they just use sesame seeds to do that. And uh, uh, tahini doesn't really have a very strong taste. It's, it's a little bit, but um, it just kind of sits in the background and uh, really helps to make this uh, nice and creamy. So uh, I see it in the, the, com the question. Uh, you have a brand of tahini that's easier to mix. The canned one is always separated. Um, not really, uh, you know, just like natural peanut butter, it's usually uh, separated, uh, so you have to mix it. But um, if you can find it in the jar, then it's so much easier to just shake it and mix it that way uh, rather than in the can. Uh, also, uh, you can put it in the microwave as long as you have it in a jar. Uh, you put it in a microwave and that really softens it up quite a bit, uh, makes it a lot thinner and it's much easier to, to shake at that point. Um, and could you use something else? 
Um, you could probably use uh, peanut butter in this recipe. Uh, it, I wouldn't really prefer that because peanut butter kind of has its own taste, um, uh, more so than tahini, but uh, I guess an alternative would be uh, cashew butter. If you get that at the store, uh, cashews don't really have a very strong taste and it would uh, substitute fine here as well. But then you couldn't call it lemon tahini sauce. All right, so I'm gonna put the tahini in. There's about a cup of that. So like I said, just like peanut butter, it, it kind of separates naturally. So I'm kind of at the end of the, the big jar that I used. And so it's really thick. So I'll compensate by adding some more water to that. All right, I'm gonna put in a clove of garlic. My cat is hungry, but we can ignore him. All right, so clove of garlic. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon or uh, like a half inch thumb of fresh ginger, All right? So uh, again, one of the benefits of using a really powerful blender is uh, you can just put it in whole. You don't have to like peel it or, you know, really do anything to it. Just go ahead and put it right in. And Colin, someone okay. actually asked, is there a particular style of Vitamix to get? Um, is it safe to get a refurbished? And where did you say to look for it? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, refurbished, I, I see them on the Vitamix website. Um, so you can go there. Uh, also, they have Black Friday sales as well, right after Thanksgiving, where uh, they're a lot cheaper. And uh, yeah, um, uh, refurbished really should be fine. Uh, you know, Vitamix, uh, like, you know, I've, I have a couple of Vitamixes and one of them I've had for over 20 years at this point, and it just keeps on going. So they're, they last a very long time. They're very high quality. Um, as far as the, the uh, model, this is the Vita Prep model or uh, the uh, Vitamix 5200 uh, series is uh, really similar to that. The one thing that I recommend, you know, they have ones that are very basic. They have ones that are uh, you know, have a, a lot of buttons and different, you know, presets and everything. Just make sure that you get one that has the variable speed knob on it, because that's one of the things that makes the Vitamix so, uh, so useful is you can turn the speed up and down. And it's not like buttons that you push with a, a regular blender. All right. So there's two tablespoons of, of tamari. All right. Tamari is very similar to soy sauce. Uh, it's kind of backwards because um, tamari is fermented soy sauce, right? And actual soy sauce that you find in the store is going to be fermented uh, soy and different grains and things like that. So uh, soy sauce is not always just soy, but tamari is always soy, just to confuse everybody, right? So I'm going to put in the juice of one lemon here, right? So I always juice my own lemons. I don't buy the the, uh, the stuff in a little plastic yellow bottle. Uh, that stuff lasts a really long time. If you juice a lemon and you put it in the refrigerator, it's gonna last for you know, maybe four days or so, and then it starts to go bad. So when you have that little yellow plastic thing full of lemon juice on the refrigerator, and it's been in there for like four months and it's still good, why is it still good? It's not supposed to be. So just squeeze a fresh lemon, it's gonna taste so much better. And then, Put in about a half a cup of water. That's just to kind of get it started. Uh, like I said, this is a thicker, uh, actually I'm gonna put in another half a cup here. Uh, because the tahini is really thick, uh, it's just the stuff at the bottom of the jar. So I wanna make sure that there's a lot of liquid here. All right, so I'm just gonna run this for a minute and blend everything together. How much tamari did you say? Uh, two tablespoons. Okay, thank you. Let's check my own recipe. Yep, two tablespoons. So, you know, for all of the recipes that I have uh, in my cookbooks, um, you know, I don't really do much baking. So the, you know, specific ingredient uh, amounts 
aren't really that critical. Uh, you know, it's not like in baking where you have to have everything balanced exactly right or it totally flops. Um, you know, if you don't want it to be as salty, don't use as, as much tamari. Um, you can use soy sauce instead. It's okay. I just prefer the taste of tamari. It's a little bit darker, a little kind of a richer flavor. Uh, but, you know, you can, uh, like I added a lot of water to this, you could see, so this is going to be pretty thin. You can play with the amount of water so you can have it thicker as a sauce or thinner, you know, it's up to you, but uh, this is all set. And so I have a lot of mason jars in my house. All right, so this is, uh, makes about a pint. And uh, so all of the sauces that we're gonna make tonight freeze very well, very easily. So, uh, you know, if I'm not gonna use this, I'll just put it in the freezer and save it for later. Um, I might put it into little half pint jars um, instead of the pint jars, just so that, uh, you know, if I take it out, I don't need to reheat the whole thing because then I will eat the whole thing if I reheat a whole thing like that. So I'm just gonna rinse this out real quick. And before we move on to the next sauce, does anybody have any questions or comments at this point? Benefit of doing this, these classes online is I'm right next to my sink, so I can rinse everything out. I don't need to have somebody run it for me into the kitchen. I have a question. Okay. Um, typically, what kind of uh, food would you apply this sauce over? Um, you, like I said, some kind of a combination of uh, whole grains. Uh, beans, tofu, vegetables. So uh, in the cookbook, I have the recommendation specifically for uh, having it with quinoa, uh, with edamame, uh, which is like the, the um, green soybeans that you see, uh, you know, veggies, kale, you know, any kind of uh, veggies, and then some black sesame seeds on top. Uh, that's a really nice color combination. It looks very nice, but, uh, you know, this, like I said, this is really a util utility sauce and I've put this over, you know, all kinds of different grains and beans and vegetables. And, you know, to me, it doesn't really matter so much. Right. Um, someone asked in the chat, is there a substitute for tahini? Um, or maybe another sauce from your book you would recommend? <laughs> Seems like a uh, crucial piece of that one. Um, you know, if I was going to substitute with something, I, I guess I would go with the cashew butter would probably be the, the probably the, the most uh, parallel in terms of not much taste, uh, not having a strong taste to overpower it. Right. And do you use the sauce hot or cold? Um, I just make it and um, uh, uh, pour it over just like you saw it. So I don't cook this sauce. There's nothing in there that I need to cook. Um, but uh, there are, there is one other uh, recipe that we're going to do where you do need to cook it, uh, which we'll get to that in just a bit. But um, in this recipe, uh, I don't, I don't cook it. Uh, is it close to lemon tahini salad dressing? And then is tahini a high caloric item? Yeah, uh, lemon tahini salad dressing. Yeah, it would be pretty similar. Uh, this is probably going to be a little bit thicker. Um, you know, uh, lemon tahini salad dressing, like uh, goddess dressing, isn't really that far away from from you know these ingredients using predominantly tahini and uh, lemon juice. But usually, um, salad dressing has a lot of vinegar in it, uh, typically. Okay. Um, the, uh, is tahini a high caloric item, and is the water hot or cold? Um, I think when blending. Yeah, um, I just uh, get it out of the sink, so I don't worry. Uh, you know, when I blend it for a couple of minutes, that kind of the friction in the Vitamix kind of heats it up a little bit. So, you know, hot or cold, I don't, I don't really worry about that much. Um, and about how much I put in on a bowl, uh, you know, probably several tablespoons of this. So maybe uh, between two and four tablespoons, I'd say. And then also the question um, is tahini a, a high caloric item? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's fairly high in calories. Um, you know, 
there are all, all kinds of different schools of thought uh, in the nutrition world. And, you know, I don't really like to get into nutrition debates with people because, you know, there's a thousand different uh, opinions and, uh, you know, people fight about it all the time. And, you know, I just eat, I'm vegan, you know, I eat whole food, uh, plant-based, uh, you know, I like to use a lot of unprocessed food. I like to make a, a lot of my own food. So, you know, one of the debates in the in the nutrition community is, um, uh, you know, some people don't like to use oil. Uh, I don't really use much any oil at all. Um, I like to get my sources of fat from uh, from nuts and, you know, like I said, uh, seeds like the tahini, things like that. Uh, uh, oil is is very, very high uh, calorie, uh, you know, not very filling, but, you know, if you use uh, whole food sources of fat, then I believe it's something that your body is is able to process a lot easier and really knows what to do with that versus, you know, very processed and strained oil. I don't really like to use that. All right. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start the next recipe here. So this is the Cuban smoky sweet sauce. All right. So typically, uh, you know, this kind of a recipe has uh, typically has a lot of oil if you look up, uh, you know, this kind of traditional recipe online. And so, uh, you know, there there's kind of some different ways around that uh, where you get the same kind of creamy consistency, but you're not really using any oil. So uh, we're starting with two cups of chopped tomatoes uh, plus one large tomato. So it makes about that much. So these are all fresh vine tomatoes. I don't, I don't really like to use any, the other kind of tomato, like the beefsteak tomato. Um, you know, those just, to me, they just kind of smell and taste like plastic. But, uh, you know, if you get the vine tomatoes in the store already on the vine, then, uh, you know, you pick them up, you smell them, they smell like fresh tomatoes, they taste really good. So definitely would recommend that. So I'm going to put the tomatoes in. And there's really no liquid that you have to add. There's no water to this because the Vitamix is gonna blend this so much. Uh, also, you know, you can totally skip this step of, you know, peeling the tomatoes and, you know, taking the seeds out, uh, which normally you would have to um, with, uh, uh, you know, just a regular blender because, um, you know, uh, it's gonna affect the consistency of it. But the Vitamix really blends it so much, makes it so creamy that um, you just can skip that completely. So there's the tomatoes and I'm going to put in two medjool dates. So I like to use these as a natural whole food source of sweetener instead of sugar, you know, anything like uh, agave or, uh, you know, table sugar, anything like that's going to be pretty processed, but the medjool dates are a natural form of sweetener. And I'm going to put in two ta uh, one tablespoon of cashews. Right, so some raw cashews here. I'm really just trying to add a little bit of like natural fat um, just to help make this sauce nice and creamy as well. Uh, so like I said, instead of using oil, I'm just gonna use the cashews. They don't have a very strong taste. They just kind of hang out in the background. And the uh, substitute for that would be tahini uh, if you wanted to use that instead. All right, one clove of garlic, one large clove of garlic, I am going with the large one. All right, also two teaspoons of uh, tamari. All right, that's here. And I'm gonna do uh, one teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. That is right here. That uh, balsamic vinegar really makes a big difference in this recipe, gives it a great taste. So uh, let's see. Uh, there is a combination of different powdered spices here. We have uh, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, um, also a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and I put in a teaspoon of salt. You don't have to use that much salt. You can decide, you know, depending on whether or not you want to use salt or how much it's up to you, but um, I generally put in about a teaspoon into this recipe, and I showed in the last class, but I'll show you again. This is the type of salt that I like to use. This is the Redmond Real Salt, R-E-D-M-O-N-D. Uh, Redmond Real Salt comes from an ancient salt mine out in the Midwest. 
uh, of the United States, and it actually has the highest mineral content of any salt on the market. So um, that's a little bit harder to find in a regular supermarket. Um, mine has it now, just kind of randomly, but um, you you might have to go to Whole Foods to find that or just order it online on Amazon, comes right to your door. Okay. Um, there's a couple questions as well. Speaking of ingredients, is there a better kind or brands that you recommend of vinegar? Of the vinegar? Uh, I don't get, I don't really get too picky with uh, vinegar. Um, I usually get the Bragg's, um, the uh, apple cider vinegar is Bragg's that I usually get. And every grocery store has that pretty much. Uh, for a balsamic vinegar, I would say, um, you know, if it's not something that I use all the time in recipes. So I'm willing to pay a little bit more for kind of a higher quality balsamic vinegar and uh, just keep that in the pantry and that's good. All right. Um, and then there's a question on reasonable price to pay for medjool dates. Yep. Yeah. So this is the package that I get. This is from the regular supermarket. This, um, I usually find these in the produce section. They're usually uh, like right around where the, the potatoes and onions are. Um, usually these are on like a little shelf underneath or something. So this is usually about five bucks for a one pound container of dates. So that's typically what I find them for is uh, you know, one supermarket to the next, it's usually about five bucks for a pound. Right. All right, so uh, I added the, uh, the dry ingredients and the last thing I'm gonna add is a half a teaspoon of liquid smoke. So uh, used to be in a container, but it got split. So now I just keep it in this. Uh, liquid smoke is just water that's been infused with smoke and that uh, gives things a nice, a really nice smoky flavor. All right, so I'll put in, there's about a half a teaspoon. Already you smell it, I can smell it anyway. It gives, gives it a wonderful smoky aroma. All right, so I'm just gonna blend this for a minute here. Colin, there was one question just to back up a little bit. Um, it was about how much do you pour on your bowl? That was about the tahini sauce. Does it vary depending on the, the, the um, sauce? Uh, I usually put somewhere between two and four tablespoons of sauce on. Uh, but, you know, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't measure it out. I don't worry about it too much. You know, if you're eating a, a grain bowl full of healthy food and you make this sauce that's also, you know, using healthy whole food ingredients, then, you know, if I put on four tablespoons, like I'm, I'm really not worrying about, you know, what are the calories and how much fat is in that. It's all uh, natural forms of, of uh, fiber and, and uh, fat and calories are in there and everything. So I don't really worry about it. And then someone's asked, where do you get liquid smoke? Um, you probably can find it in your supermarket in the condiment section. Um, again, you probably have to hunt for it because um, it's it's uh, usually comes in a thin uh, uh, cardboard box, like it comes in a little bottle that's like like that, almost pretty tiny. And uh, um, it's it's all I've always found it in the condiment section. Um, kind of near where the hot sauces are and like steak sauces and things like that. So, um, you know, most of the time, if you look, you can find it. It's just can be a little bit tricky. And sometimes you need to, um, you need to ask where to find it. Okay. okay there's a, a couple more that, uh, this one, just cause we're on the topic of, of liquid smoke is everything in liquid smoke safe. Um, and also about how much smoked paprika should be used if you don't have it. Uh, if you don't have the liquid smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. You could probably double the amount of the um, uh, smoked paprika. Uh, you know, if paprika is, is a very mild pepper, so it's not going to be too spicy if you use it in smaller amounts. But I think if you more than doubled it, then 
you might start to it might start to get a little bit uh, spicy for you. So I said, I guess it kind of depends on you know how much tolerance you have for a spice level. Uh, it, everything in liquid smoke safe. Uh, I feel comfortable using it. Uh, you know, you can definitely uh, take a look online. You know, that's a question I've heard before. Um, you know, is it carcinogen, uh, carcinogenic or anything like that? So, um, you know, definitely if you have any concern, just look online and learn more about it. But I, I feel okay using it. Um, and then the last one is the PDF mentions miso paste, but just a fourth a teaspoon. Will that add to taste or is there a reason for it? Uh, the miso... Um, I was going to mention that at the end. The miso just gives it a little bit more of a, um, a little bit more salt, and it kind of gives it some more, uh, gives it some probiotic health benefit as well. Um, it's definitely not necessary. You don't need to add it. Um, in a quarter of a teaspoon, it's not really going to um, add much of a taste to it. It just kind of makes it a little bit saltier and a little, a little bit tangy, a little bit extra tang. So uh, it's definitely a uh, uh, optional ingredient. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to blend this for another minute and then move the other stuff over just so that this can blend up well. Uh, once I'm done with this, I won't do it right now, but um, I will usually cook this on uh, medium heat on in a saucepan for about 10 minutes uh, just to kind of cook out that raw uh, flavor of the tomatoes. And also there's the garlic in here. So it just kind of tames that a little bit. So of the four sauce recipes that we're going to do tonight, this is the one that I definitely would um, cook this one for at least 10 minutes on medium heat, right? And I uh, saw so there's a question, can we substitute Bragg's amino for the tamari? Um, it's uh, tamari, not tamarind, uh, very big difference, um, not to be picky, but uh, you can definitely use Bragg's amino instead of tamari or soy sauce, it's totally fine. Uh, tamarind is uh, of uh, very different things. So. Uh, let's see, I pay $8 per pound at ShopRite from a Jewel Dates. Remind me again what your brand is. Uh, this is the Natural Delights brand. Uh, that's usually what I find in most of the supermarkets in my area. Trader Joe's has them. Um, whenever I go to Trader Joe's, I usually like buy them out from all their dates. So if you go to Trader Joe's and you can't find any dates, it's probably my fault. I probably bought them all. All right. So I'm just gonna... And also I just want to make a note about the, also with the miso at the end, the reason that I'm putting the miso at, in at the very end is uh, miso has a lot of probiotics, a great health benefit to it. It's great for your gut, but um, cooking miso really kills most of the probiotic uh, benefit in it. So when you're making this sauce, you just want to put it in right at the end after you've taken it off of the uh, stove and you're not cooking it anymore. And so that way you don't, kill the probiotics in it. And what are we putting that sauce on? Uh, the recommendation that I have for that, for the Cuban smoky sweet sauce is uh, brown rice, black beans, roasted corn, green bell pepper, and avocado. But again, it's kind of a utility sauce. You can put it on a number of different things. Right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this out and then I'll put it aside and cook it. You can see it's pretty thick at the moment, but once you cook it, it kind of breaks down the tomato as well. So it thins it out and turns it to um, a deeper red color. And then two, two questions. One is how to store miso and how long does it last? And the second is where can we buy your apron? <laughs> uh, these, these, are, uh, these are custom made, two of, two of a kind. Uh, let's see. I haven't, I haven't had too many calls for, uh, for aprons. So. I haven't really had a, a need to uh, have more made, but noted. Uh, as far as storing the miso, I keep it in the refrigerator. Lasts a very long time. Uh, 
you know, I usually, I will get, uh, this is the, the brand that I get, the Miso Master. And uh, you can also get this in, uh, this is a 16 ounce container. Uh, sometimes I see these for eight ounce uh, containers as well. So you can get smaller sizes if your supermarket has that. Uh, I like to use the, um, the mellow white miso. Uh, you can get like darker miso that has a stronger taste, but the, the white miso uh, is, is pretty mild. It's just very salty and tangy. Right. So I'll move that one out of the way. Uh, the next recipe that we're gonna make is the ginger miso sauce. So on the cover of the cookbook, actually that is, that is this, the sauce. Here, so you can see there's the sauce, and this is a bowl meal uh, that I like to make with uh, kale, uh, chopped purple cabbage. There's cubes of uh, butternut squash, sweet potato in there, um, quinoa, and also I like to make uh, put tamari almonds on the top, uh, which there's a recipe on how to make that in the book. Tamari almonds are really super easy to make. Um, and then uh, I, I top it with uh, chopped mint leaves as well. Uh, chopped mint, it uh, just makes it taste so good. So, you know, there's that specific recommendation. That's what I really like to use this sauce with, but you know, you can put it over a number of different things. Uh, this one has, uh, uh, this has some vinegar in it, some lemon juice, uh, some uh, miso in addition to that. So this, uh, this ginger miso sauce, it's pretty sour. So this might be one that uh, uh, if you're serving it to your family or especially to kids, uh, definitely warn them ahead of time. Uh, for some reason, kids don't really seem to like very sour things typically as has been my experience. So, um, you know, my kids, they kind of grew up eating this, so uh, they never seem to mind, but just a warning. All right, so I'm gonna put in a quarter of a cup of cashews here. All right, I'm gonna put in a quarter of a cup of water. I'm gonna put in a quarter cup of the tamari here, right. or the Bragg's liquid aminos if you wanted to do that. I'm gonna put in a quarter cup of tahini here. And let me just, oh, I got a spoon right here, pick that out. This is actually, this recipe is kind of a, uh, my own take on uh, a, a bowl meal uh, dressing that was at, uh, oh, what was the name of that? It was a restaurant in Massachusetts that I went to and uh, they had this very similar kind of bowl meal and this ginger miso sauce, but they would put it in a little cup and put it on the side and, uh, you know, they like give you this tiny little portion and the whole bowl meal was so good, but you know, it was never enough sauce. But, you know, then I asked how they made it and uh, they actually use a lot of oil. So, um, uh, no, not in Lowell. Um, it's not, it wasn't Life Alive, um, if that's what you're thinking. Um, very, very good um, uh, restaurant though. Love that restaurant. All right. And then a third of a cup of uh, apple cider vinegar here, I'll put that in. Right. And then the juice of one lemon that I did already. I haven't been to Life Alive in a long time. Very, very good. All right, uh, let's see, two inches of uh, fresh ginger. So there's the ginger root, I'm gonna put that in. All right, it's gonna taste so much better than uh, anything that you're gonna get out of a jar for sure. Uh, also, I'm going to put in two small shallots. So a shallot is a type of onion, but it's very mild uh, in taste. It's kind of uh, similar to like, it's like a cross between onion and garlic, um, but it is officially an onion. So I'll put that in. And because I'm not going to be cooking this uh, recipe, I'm just going to make it and pour it right over, um, you know, a bowl meal. Then I will just add the miso in right now. So it calls for two to three tablespoons of the miso. So I just kind of put in two large spoonfuls here. Uh, kind of depends. This is what 
this is one of the things that really makes it very sour. So if you uh, get some funny looks because it's so sour, then just don't put in as much miso. Put that off to the side here. And I'll go ahead and blend this up. And, and just, if anybody has any questions, oh, then. Sorry, Colin. Um, just yeah. to clarify, you don't need to peel the ginger. No, no. I'm, I am a very lazy cook. Uh, you know, whatever I can get away with without having to do and let the blender do everything, I'm more than happy to do that. So I don't ever peel ginger. Um, uh, it just all blends right in. Uh, the, the peel is very thin and, um, you know, you just have to make sure that there's no dirt or anything like that on it. Colin, I can't tell if you can hear over the, the blender or not, but um, okay. Yeah. Someone says, I've always wondered whether one shallot includes both sides of the bulb or is that two shallots? Uh, that is uh, one shallot, both sides. Um, it kind of depends on, on like the size. Um, and I'm gonna contradict myself. In that case, um, the, the ones that I picked up at the store for today uh, were very large shallots. And um, when you um, split the peel, when you split the peel back on one large shallot, then there's two inside. Uh, so I just used the two smaller ones and called it one. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, no, I just used the one and called it two I'm backwards. Um, you know, they come in different sizes. So, you know, when it says like one small shallot, then I just, you know, if you buy a small shallot at the store, you see like how much that is and you just kind of remember that. And then, um, you know, just take a larger shallot and split it to make two small ones. All right. So there is the sauce, ginger miso sauce and very strong. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorites. Love this one, but, um, Sometimes I get funny looks because it is very sour. Um, see. I'm really trying to remember the name of the restaurant. It was not vegetarian, but, and they also don't have it anymore. That one, all right. So there's the ginger miso sauce. And I'll pull the last one out here. This is gonna be the nacho cheese sauce. This is all, always one of my kids' favorites. Uh, this is also definitely a um, utility sauce that you can put over, you know, lots of different things. Um, um, and my kids definitely did. Right? So I'm going to put in, uh, I've, I've cooked ahead of time, uh, two cups of diced yellow potatoes here uh, in with one cup of diced uh, carrot. And of course, that's unpeeled. Uh, because the peel is where really so much of the nutrition is here. So I cooked that already uh, for like 10 or 15 minutes just to get it nice and soft. Um, this recipe, when we're done blending it, uh, I just pour it right over things. I don't need to cook this because the carrot and the potato are already cooked. So um, let's see, question, do you not peel anything? Um, if it is uh, something that kind of affects the taste and the texture, then yes, I will peel it. Uh, sweet potato peel is, for example, is kind of tough. Uh, so I usually will peel that, but um, you know, where I can get away with it, like with a carrot or potato, I, I generally like to uh, leave the peel on if I can. Right. And uh, as uh, Gail had pointed out that this is freezeable, all of these sauces, definitely freezable. Um, uh, you know, one thing I, I definitely recommend in the cookbook, if you're trying to eat healthy and trying to make it as convenient as possible, use the freezer as much as you can. Um, you know, having these sauces already made and then frozen, um, you know, that you can just pull out of the freezer uh, makes it so much more convenient. So 
you know, sometimes I'd come home from work, I'd have like 10 or 15 minutes to make something healthy for my kids before I have to run back out the door and get them to a karate class or something like that. And, uh, you know, using the freezer was, was the way that I was able to do that. Um, you know, I'd have the sauces ready, I'd cook the, the grains and the beans and I uh, have all that stuff in the freezer ahead of time. So literally all I have to do is just, you know, take some different things out, thaw everything out in the microwave, uh, you know, put it in the oven, you know, whatever you want to do, heats it up fast, and then um, they have something healthy and ready to go. Because if you don't have that, you know, if you don't have those things, then it's going to be something else that you pull out of the freezer that's, you know, some kind of a, um, you know, convenience food, you know, like something processed, packaged. And, uh, you know, for, for me, I really like to have unprocessed food. That's really how I feel the healthiest um, is to eat that way. All right. So, I put in the uh, the potatoes and the carrots. Uh, next, I'm going to put in uh, about a third or three quarters of a cup of water. So what I like to do here, um, you know, when I boil the potatoes and the carrots, then I save the water. And you know, of course, uh, as it's as it's cooking, then some of the minerals and the vitamins go into the water, and then you save that, and then you can use it and keep it in here. So. I'm gonna put in, I'll start with that um, and make it thinner if I need to, but I'll put in three tablespoons of cashews. And by the way, um, you know, any kind of nut that I'll use like cashews or almonds or anything like that, I always like to get them raw if I can. Uh, again, you know, trying not to have processed food as much as I can. Uh, also, you know, I don't like to, um, definitely don't like to get the salted um, nuts because I want to be able to control how much salt or, you know, whether I use salt in it or not. So there's the three tablespoons of cashews. Um, it's the fat from the cashews is going to really help to make this sauce really nice and creamy. That along with the potatoes um, really helps that as well. And then for the uh, dry ingredients, I have some salt here. This recipe is really, this sauce is supposed to be very salty. So um, I have two teaspoons of salt in here. This does make quite a bit. So you're definitely not, you know, you're, you're not gonna be having two teaspoons of, of salt as a serving for this. This makes a lot, um, but you know, you can use less if you want. It's just, I prefer this to be uh, kind of a salty sauce. Uh, and then I will also add a quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and then also a quarter teaspoon of uh, chicken style seasoning. Uh, Trader Joe's makes a great uh, vegan chicken seasoning. Uh, you can use like bullion um, powder or something like that, but I like to put that in there. All right. And then I put in a tablespoon of lemon juice here. So I'll pour that in. And then I put in a half a cup of nutritional yeast. So uh, vegans and vegetarians will know about this, but nutritional yeast is, uh, it's an uh, inactive form of yeast. And so it's not like brewer's yeast. It's very, very different from that. Um, this is sold as flakes. And uh, a lot of supermarkets will have this now, like Trader Joe's has this. It used to be more of a specialty kind of food, but it is becoming more available now. Um, you add it to things to give it kind of a nice cheesy, like nutty flavor. People will sprinkle it over popcorn, things like that. Um, it is a, a fortified food. So, uh, you know, it has a lot of health benefits as well, but I'm gonna put it in here just to you know, make this a nice cheesy sauce. All right, and I'll just get this blending here for a minute. This one, uh, it's definitely kind of thicker because of the potatoes. Uh, I'm gonna add some liquid to this because I don't want the, the blender to get stuck. All right. So just gonna mix that together here. Right. And this is definitely one that you wanna let run for several minutes. You really want this to come out super smooth and creamy. I'll shake that up. Um, does any
anybody have any questions or comments about that one so far? Um, a couple. Is Old Bay okay too? Um, and someone yeah. has, I've heard unfortified yeast is healthier. Uh, let's see. Um, nutritional yeast is, is usually fortified. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it unfortified before. Um, but maybe you can find that online. Um, you know, nutritional yeast is something that's been around for uh, decades now. And uh, uh, I've definitely never heard of any negative health consequences, only positive from using it. Right. And uh, the name of the sauce, this is the nacho cheese sauce. So I like to use this. Um, the recommendation is uh, say this sauce can be used as a nacho cheese dip if you want. Um, if you make it thick, but if you wanted to make it thinner, you could pour it over a bowl of uh, rice and black beans, chopped tomatoes, sliced avocados, and some cilantro. So this would be delicious for that. All right. So this one, uh, like I said, I really like to let this run for a while um, just to, um, you know, really kind of let the friction heat it up some more and uh, just to make this really super, super smooth and creamy, you want this to be just velvety, smooth, creamy. So uh, I normally let this run for a while. So I don't need to uh, do that for minutes and minutes and make you guys <laughs> watch me blend the sauce. But uh, that's, that's about it for that sauce. I'll do the rest later. And you have the four sauces there. Uh, let's see. All right. So I went through everything with that. So uh, again, just wanted to mention uh, the Healthy Vegan Cookbook uh, is available on Amazon in print and ebook version. And really the focus is of the cookbook. There's uh, smoothies, uh, breakfast smoothies that taste like dessert. There's about 30 recipes for that. And then there's 30 recipes for different sauces. You know, really the idea is to be able to have lots of variety. You can have, you know, something different every day. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, especially if you're having a lot of grain uh, bowl meals, things like that, you know, it can seem kind of boring a little bit, but, uh, you know, having a really good sauce, um, you know, having something different every day, uh, it's a pleasure to eat. You know, people sometimes think that healthy eating is like a sacrifice, but, uh, you know, if you're having, you know, this kind of yummy food every day, you know, to me definitely does not feel like a sacrifice. It feels great and my body feels great. All right, so it does freezing nuts. Uh, okay, how long does it last? Um, uh, definitely you can keep nuts in the freezer or the refrigerator that's gonna really slow down uh, the process of them uh, eventually um, turning and becoming stale. Uh, so I definitely would recommend um, if you have, uh, uh, you know, cashews or things like that and you're not gonna use them up really quickly then uh, I would definitely recommend that you put them in the refrigerator or the freezer and it'll last a lot longer that way. Okay. And, um, and to the question earlier, is Old Bay seasoning okay to use too? That's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, that's what I used to use to make the sauce before um, I found the Trader Joe's one. So, um, you know, I, I think it's probably fairly interchangeable there. Okay. And also, uh, just want to point out this is my other cookbook uh, smoothies that taste like Girl Scout cookies so I took all 10 of the Girl Scout cookie flavors and turned them into healthy smoothies using healthy whole food ingredients um, but you know getting uh, you know the taste of uh, thin mints and uh, the peanut butter cookie the dough. -si -do, uh, I was able to, to put that together so uh, there's that as well and what kind of container to freeze nuts? Um, honestly, I usually just freeze them in the container that I get them in. Um, yep. All right. And, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, the getting something like cashews, uh, they're fairly expensive if you're going to go to Whole Foods. Uh, you know, it, it really depends. It's, it's totally up to you, you know, whether you're going to prioritize organic or not. Um, you know, what I like to do for uh, getting cashews, things like that, is to go to the Indian supermarket, um, which there's a couple in my area. Uh, they often have, uh, you know, large bags of 
of raw cashews uh, for a lot cheaper than what you're going to get in a regular supermarket in a much smaller container. Um, or you can just order them online as well, uh, get them in bulk much, much cheaper that way. Right. Also, fun fact for uh, raw cashews, uh, raw cashews are not actually raw, uh, not totally anyway. Uh, cashews, if you've ever seen pictures of how they grow, uh, they kind of grow at the end of a little fruit and they actually have a toxin in them that is uh, poisonous to people if you eat it like that. So even for raw cashews, they do have to cook it to uh, just a minimum temperature just to uh, bake off that uh, toxin so that you don't get sick when you eat it. Uh, so um, I always, I think that's just kind of a, a funny uh, trivia thing that raw cashews aren't technically really raw because they would make you sick. Right. Does anybody have any questions or comments? All right. Uh, we have the veggie burgers and veggie sausages uh, that's coming up in the background. Uh, yes, my river is, this is the Kennebec River in the background here. Um, yeah, let me get out of the way so you watch that. <laughs> uh, veggie burgers and sausages class. Uh, this is going to be a great one coming up uh, at the end of May for, uh, you know, doing grilling, outdoor cooking. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, it kind of takes a little while to, to put it together. So I usually make it in a double or triple batch and then freeze them uh, and then put it in the freezer and, uh, you know, just pull them out over the course of the summer and just use it um, uh, and enjoy it that way over the summer. 